Okay, start out with some injury updates. Uh, Mingo had a concussion. Um, Woods had a hamstring. Uh, Xavier Woods had a hamstring. Frankie Blue had a hip pointer, and C.J. Anderson had an ankle. Um, a tough loss. Um, you know, coming in, we knew we knew the environment would be tough. Um, you know, good football team and a tough place to play. Uh, we emphasize. You know, the number of penalties was totally inexcusable, pathetic. Um, you know, we, we talked in there, I would just say this as a general statement. First of all, what we said in there was, and, and I mean every ounce of it, I, I have a very strong belief in our team and our players. I have a very strong belief in our coaches. And I know we can be a good football team if we don't beat ourselves. That being said, um, what we did, the number of penalties that we had on offense was pathetic. And, um, you know, that starts with me uh, as an offensive coach. That starts with our offensive coaches, you know, getting our players ready. And that starts with our players. That's unacceptable. I mean, it's like we never played in the noise before. We knew it was coming. We practiced all week with, with noise. I mean, Wednesday it was so loud out there you couldn't even think. Um, and, uh, but, you know, as coaches and as players together, and I, and I mean that together, as coaches and as players, you just, if you have that many self-inflicted things, you just, it's hard to overcome those. And um, so we got we to learn from that for sure. You know, defensively, I, you know, felt like we, you know, we held them in the first half, no touchdowns. Uh, you know, they hit some runs on a slate. You know, listen, I, I said to the defense, I know we're, you know, we put the defense in a hard position. We put the defense in a hard position, you know, with the slow starts on offense. And it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And then what happens is sometimes later in the game that, that mounts up and then, you know, you get a little crack and, you know, so, but we, we got to stand strong and, uh, you know, as players and coaches on defense and, you know, we got it to one score, we got it to two points or within a one score game and they're in the fourth quarter and then they drove down and scored and we needed to, st we needed to stop right there. We needed to stop when we didn't get it. So um, I, I do know this. I, do, I do, do know in this locker room there's two things that are going to happen. One, there is belief, and number two, there will be no finger pointing. Um, that's not going to happen. We're each going to own our mistakes, man up to our mistakes. We understand that the mistakes are collective, coaches and players together, got to get better. And, uh, but we each individually have to look at our specific area in a way that we can individually get better as well. So I'll open it up from there. Frank, uh, four of those false starts were called on Iggy. Anything in particular you think he needs to improve or that you're Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we have to figure out. We have to figure out, um, you know, Icky has to look at it himself. We have to look at it like what can we do to help him in those situations. Um, that, that's the process you go through. Um, like I said, I just had not experienced it like that before. Um, you know, it, yeah, I mean, we have to be able to change plays. I mean, on, on the road, quarterback has to be able to change plays. Uh, and that's going to happen. So we talked about keeping our poise, and we didn't do that. 58 pass attempts for Dalton. I'm sure that's not what yeah, the game Yeah, you, you don't come into Seattle and throw 58 times and win very many games. So that was not the formula that we wanted. Uh, the run game was non-existent, um, you know. And so we got to continue to work on that. Um, I did think that I did think that Andy handled the pass game pretty well. I think he handled the pass game pretty well. Made a lot of good throws. We made some plays in the pass game. You know, I thought given 58 attempts and, and here, there are times the protection broke down, but it wasn't horrible. You know, like it was. You know, I have to look at the tape, but you know, in many ways, I thought Andy, I thought Andy was pretty solid. Um, I thought Andy did a lot of good things today. Frank, after you guys ran so well in Atlanta in the opener, it hasn't been as much of a factor. Why is that after? Yeah, it's just surprising to me. It's surprising. It really is surprising to me. Um, it's, it's surprising to me. So we know for us to be the offense and the team we want to be, we need to have more balance in the offense. And so we have to continue to work on that. And I, I know you said Bryce would be the starter when, when he's healthy. But with the way the line's playing right now, are you worried about putting him back in there? No, not at all. 
Frank, given the prep that you referenced in terms of preparing for the norms, what do you think contributed to the challenge in actually facing it today? Um, I don't know. Like when Wednesday, I promise you, it was louder Wednesday at practice than it was out there today. And, and we never really turned it down. Um, when they were in the huddle, we had, we had a lot of, of the line of scrimmage. Um, and I don't remember us having a false start on Wednesday, you know. And then on Thursday and Friday, we still used the noise. It wasn't quite as loud because, honestly, you know, Andy, Andy was really hoarse after Wednesday just from screaming the whole day. And uh, so we had to manage it just a little bit um, so they didn't lose his voice. Um, so we, we got we to gotta figure that one out. Um, would you yeah. say you're in damage control right now a little bit, or how would you describe You've been in this no, situation this is, before. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, listen, this game was, we're in the fourth quarter, and it's a two, well, I think it's a two-point game at one point in the fourth quarter, or I don't know. It was within one score. And in spite of all those penalties, we, have, we got it to a point where we make a stop, if we make a stop and then follow up with the score, we can win that game. We're in the fourth quarter and that game is winnable if we can put it together in all three phases, just for one quarter. We're in the fourth quarter and if we can put it together, we can win that game. And then it got, and it got away from us. Do you worry a little bit, Frank, though, about your message uh, you know, being well received in there when you're not seeing the outcomes that you want? No, those guys are pros. Um, I don't. It, we're th you know, listen, it's, we're three games into this. Um, everybody understands. I, the kind of guys we got in there, I believe everybody takes ownership. Everybody understands it's a long season. Um, and there's no guarantees on anything. We, we know we can be a good team. And I, I, again, I've been one in five and one playoff games. But here's what I know. When, when you're in a situation like that where you're 0-3 or 1-5 and or something like that and you're behind the eight ball and you say, well, can you still make the playoffs? Uh, absolutely. But the way you do it is not thinking about that. All you worry about is the next team. So really, that's right now all we do is go back, look at this film, and then get focused on the Minnesota Vikings. And it's one week at a time and keep getting better. And, and I do think there are some areas we got better. You know, we made some plays in the past game. Um, DJ, you know, DJ flashed making a few plays down the field. Um, there, there, were, there were more positive things, you know. Um, third down, third down conversion was better. That was progress. Defense, you know, in the first half, like, again, no touchdowns, you know, in some pretty difficult situations that we put them in. So there's still plenty of positives to build on, and I think we all know that. And I don't think anybody feels like we've been outmanned in any game. It's not, you know, like we just have beat ourselves. So, um, just got to continue to get better. We'll take a couple more. Of all the injuries that you mentioned, any of immediate concern coming out of this game? Just kind of got to wait and see how it all, you know, 24 hours later, see, you know, uh, with Mingo going through the protocol, you know, you just have to wait and see, you know, what that looks like. Um, Xavier, I'm not sure that, the, the, you know, the severity or the degree of his hamstring. So, um, and then Frankie's hip pointer, you know, those, those things, they, they vary in degree. You know, so that's kind of wait and see the, how that, and then the same thing with CJ's ankle. I haven't, haven't heard how severe that is yet, so we'll find out in the next 24, 48 hours. Frank, along those lines, how concerned are you about simply the fatigue for guys like Derek, Brian, who are out there playing a lot of snaps when things have gotten away in the last couple weeks? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're paid to do. You know, that's what we're paid to do. So. Um, Shoot, we, we, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming those guys like to, you know, and I'm not saying this like as a smart, uh, uh, shoot, these guys are played to play football. We're paid to co play, coach football. So let's go do it. If you want me to play 80 plays? Let's go. I'll sign up and play 80 plays. You want me to do that 17 weeks in a row? Yeah, that's that's what we do. Um, that's our mentality. Uh, what does it take? What, hey, what can I do to help this team win? Play more plays? Okay. And now we as coaches got to manage that. and. Um, is there wear and tear? And I, I think we do a pretty good job, you know, during the week managing, getting guys ready physically with how we practice, pulling guys out. We manage reps during the week, knowing that certain guys are playing more. When a guy plays a lot of plays in the game, that next week in practice, we pull back on him to allow him to recover. So we don't just count the game 
reps, they mean a lot, but we look at the week worth of work and we manage that load and try to make it manageable for each of the guys. Right. Frank, right. Kind, right. Of the, this is, this kind of the, the last one. To piggyback off of his question, um, you've had a lot of injuries to key players and new staff, so many new faces here in the building. Um, I know that you have to kind of change your game plan. How much of, to what degree have you guys had to just make so many changes just, just three weeks into the season? Um, there's been a number of changes, but like, of course, we're never going to look at like, what was me, right? I mean, you know, new staff, a lot of injuries. My guess is everybody's dealing with the same thing we're dealing with. That's, that's just what I assume because um, I've dealt with this before. And so um, I, I got confidence in our roster, in our roster, in our roster, the depth that we have. Um, and I think a lot of guys have stepped up. And yeah, it's a new coaching staff. And we're getting, and, and I feel like in some ways, we, I know I feel like we're getting better in some ways as a staff. Um, and as players and in each unit. It wasn't good enough to win for the first three weeks, but um, we'll keep fighting and scratching. Thanks. Thank you.